Cuban 2 1704 is scheduled for formal release on the 13th of April 2017. Out of all the official Ubuntu derivatives, Kuban 2 has seen the most significant changes, particularly since the LTS release of Kuban 2 1604. This is due to the aggressive development of the Plasma desktop, which is now up to version 5.9.4. That is two and four major version jumps from 1610 and 1604 respectively. There are also underlying changes with the system, such as driverless printing support for IPP and Apple AirPrint printers, no more swap partition, and a newer kernel. Apologies if you have watched my Everything New with Ubuntu video, because I will have to cover some of the same changes here in Kubuntu. The associated KDE applications have been upgraded to version 16.12.3, and some new applications have been added, for example K-Wave. I was trying to think of the best way to demonstrate all the new features, but for the sake of keeping this video to a reasonable length, I'm going to have to utilise the release notes and link to a couple of videos I've done actually demonstrating the features, so you can take a look if you're interested. One of the features I like in the Spectacle Screenshot tool is the ability to drag and drop the pictures straight away, you don't have to save them. There's some changes on the icon widget properties, that's if you've got icons on your desktop, something which I don't have, so I don't really know much about that feature. You can switch between tasks using the Windows or Super key. For example, in that picture, you could use the Windows key and 1 and open up Dragon Player. There's some additional actions on the KRunner searcher. More streamlined visuals. Appearance of the scroll bars has changed, they're slightly narrower now in the Plasma 5.9 desktop. Global menus have returned. Additional information is provided on the tooltips. And additional features have been added to the look and feel themes. The defaults are a light and dark switcher, but depending on the distribution, probably not Kuban to a such, but some other distributions do have additional look and feel themes there, and you can change the theme of your desktop quite significantly. There's a new style to the network configuration. Further improvements to Wayland. If you lack a compatible graphics card, KDE will automatically fall back to the Xorg desktop. Not a problem for NVIDIA users. So that's all the changes from the Plasma 5.9.0 desktop. Moving up to the 5.9.4 brings about additional translations and a few bug fixes. Nothing major though. And since Plasma 5.8, there have been some improvements to KDE Store. Uh, desktop Search, kind of mentioned that before on KRunner, so it's just improved a bit more since 5.8. The unified look, that's the improvement to the theming with GTK and Qt applications on Breeze. Better phone integration. Uh, I've not noticed a huge amount of changes though with KD Connect. But yeah, it's certainly a very good application to use if you're connecting your Android phone to your Linux desktop. Infinitely customizable. Indeed, I'm using a Unity style desktop in KDE. Better support on the right to left language support. Improved applets. Well, this is covering the media controls on the right click menu on the application switcher. Simplified global shortcuts. Incidentally, you can use the Windows or Super key on its own, so you can use it as an alternative to Alt and F1. In other words, open the application launcher with just the Windows key, replicating the behavior of Windows. And that pretty much covers it for the KDE desktop. That is a massive amount of changes. You can now use IPP, or Internet Printing Protocol based printers and Apple AirPrint printers without installing any drivers, and I quote, this way of connecting a printer is about as easy as connecting a USB stick. Unfortunately I do not own a printer, so I'm unable to verify how well this feature works. Ubuntu now utilises swap files instead of a swap partition. With the increase in size of memory on modern systems, sacrificing a dedicated area of your hard drive for something that won't receive much use doesn't really make much sense. Combined with the reduction in price and increased uptake of solid state drives, which have a limited read-write cycle, there is all the more incentive to use a swap file. The swap files will be no more than 5% of free disk space or 2 gigabytes, whichever is lower. The Linux kernel has been uplifted to version 4.10, which brings us improved support to the Intel KB Lake and AMD Ryzen CPUs. As in evidence of the work being done to bring Android and mainline kernels together, this release includes support for ARM SOCs such as Nexus 6P, Nexus 5X, and the Pine64 development board, which is based on the all-winner A64. 
There's some improvements to the Microsoft Surface 3 and 4, improved Raspberry Pi 3 support, Synaptic touchpad improvements, and support for the Sony DualShock 4 controllers via Bluetooth. The open source graphics library Mesa has been uplifted to version 17.0.2, great for anyone who wants to use the AMD Vulkan, Intel or Novu graphics drivers, and it will provide improved performance in modern gaming. I expect Mesa 17.0 will be backported to the LTS release of Ubuntu 16.04 at some point. LibreOffice has been updated to version 5.3, which brings us the new My User Friendly and Flexible Interface, or Muffin for short. It allows you to choose from four different styles of toolbar, including a single toolbar, sidebar, a notebook bar, which closely resembles the Microsoft ribbon bar, or the old default style. Is it worth upgrading from Kubuntu 1604? Definitely. The Plasma 5.9.4 desktop brings a huge advancement not just in features, but also to stability, over the old Plasma 5.5 desktop which came with Kubuntu 1604. Although you could always add the Kubuntu Backports repository and upgrade the desktop. Or use KD Neon instead of Kubuntu. The newer kernel will offer better stability for owners of newer CPUs, although you could utilise the hardware enablement stack and install a newer kernel in 16.04. Other than the driverless IPP printing and the removal of swap partition, you could have all the features of Kubuntu 17.04 backported to 16.04. However, it takes work to do. Upgrading to 17.04 is the easy answer, but you would be throwing away four years of support time. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.